welcome back to this uh, series of lectures on numerical optimization. So, in the last class, uh, we saw uh, steepest descent algorithm. So, the idea of steepest descent algorithm is to approximate uh, the given function by an affine function at a given point and find out the direction in which there is a maximum decrease and that direction is called the steepest descent direction. So, we saw that uh, if we have the uh, contours which are like this, then uh, and this is the current point x k and this is the gradient direction. So, that means in that in that direction the function value increases. Now, this is the affine approximation of the function at x k and we use uh, the direction which is uh, the negative of g k uh, which will give the maximum decrease with respect to the approximation. So, this is the negative gradient direction and uh, so we call this as steepest descent direction and that is nothing but negative of the gradient direction. So, we saw about this steepest descent algorithm in the last class where we use in the every iteration of the optimization algorithm, we use the steepest descent direction. Now, uh, we also saw that uh, if we had uh, ellip uh, circular contours, the steepest descent algorithm uh, takes one step to reach the solution irrespective of the starting point. But if we have elliptical contours, so for example, uh, suppose the contours are like this. then the steepest descent algorithm uh, exhibits zigzagging behavior. So, lot more iterations are needed uh, for uh, achieving convergence, especially when the starting points are uh, not along the uh, eigenvectors. So, uh, the question is that can we convert uh, this function into uh, the functions, I mean into a function where the contours look circular. So, if we can do that, then uh, we can use the steepest descent method in this new space. So, let us call this as x space and this as y space. So, by transforming the original function into the new space and we can uh, use the uh, steepest descent method in the new space to uh, achieve faster convergence. Now, suppose uh, the objective function here is uh, of the type f of x is equal to half of x transpose h x, where h is a symmetric positive definite matrix. Now, so, we want to get uh, circular contours here. So, typically uh, this function will be of the form half of y transpose y, where the Hessian matrix either is an identity matrix or is a multiple of identity matrix. So, let us assume that the Hessian matrix is an identity matrix. So, how do we convert this uh, original function to this form? So, the idea is to split uh, uh, the matrix H into uh, the matrices uh, L and L transpose such that H is equal to L L transpose. We know that this is a Kolesky decomposition of the matrix H and that is possible because H is a uh, positive definite matrix. Now, once we do that, then how do we transform uh, the X's? So, remember that finally, we have to reach a stage where we get the function of the form y transpose y. So, if if we substitute x by l minus transpose y and 
so then this function becomes half y transpose l inverse l l transpose l transpose inverse y now if we consider this this is a identity matrix this is also a identity matrix and therefore this function that we have got here that function is same as half of y transpose y and uh, so if we do this transformation then uh, and then if we use the stripless descent uh, method in the y space we know that from uh, any point that we start suppose we start from this point we will reach the solution in one step using stripless descent method so we started looking at uh, this method and uh, so let us uh, continue our discussion on this uh, so if we are given the function uh, uh, f of x to be half x transpose h x minus c transpose x and if we define y to be l transpose x or x to be l transpose inverse y then uh, we have a new function in the y a transformed function in the y space which is h of y which is nothing but f of l transpose inverse y and uh, when we expand that what we get is uh, h of y is something like this and uh, which will result in a, a hessian matrix which is an identity matrix so this function the h function hy which is uh, the function defined in the y space has a hessian which is a identity matrix now uh, this is very important and then uh, if we apply the stripless descent method in y space so what we get is uh, the new point in the uh, y space yk plus 1 is nothing but yk minus uh, gradient of h y k. So, for quadratic functions, uh, convex quadratic functions, we can uh, achieve the minimum in one step if we apply the steepest descent algorithm in the y space. So, so the resulting uh, uh, direction in the x space, if we look at it, that direction uh, uh, is obtained by deflecting the negative gradient direction which is minus uh, gradient of f of x k by the matrix h inverse. Now, h is the hessian of the original matrix and uh, so if the, uh, uh, h is the hessian of the original function f and uh, by taking its inverse assuming that h is invertible for general function that amounts to deflecting the negative gradient by h inverse. So, the Newton method, uh, so this uh, idea of uh, deflecting the negative gradient by the hessian inverse is called the Newton method. Now, interestingly, uh, the Newton method was developed sometime in uh, 17th century and uh, the steepest descent method was developed sometime in 19th century by Cauchy. So, uh, this is not truly the motivation for a Newton method. Uh, so, the motivation for Newton method is that uh, so let us look at uh, uh, any uh, function which we want to minimize. So, let us assume that uh, uh, this function is uh, twice differentiable. Uh, so, we are considering only the one dimensional functions. Now, the uh, idea behind Newton method is that uh, suppose this is the current point x k. So, uh, this is the function value at x k. So, the idea is to approximate the given function by a quadratic function based on the first order and second order derivatives. And then 
the Newton method uh, typically tries to find the minimum of this uh, uh, quadratic objective function which is very easy to do. So, we, if we are given a quadratic function which is convex, it is very, very easy to find the minimum of a quadratic function and in this case this minimum turns out to be this point. Now, now let us look at uh, this point. So, this point becomes x k plus 1. Remember that we are trying to minimize f of x where x is unconstrained. So, typically x is in n dimensional space. Now, <coughs> now we look at this point x k plus 1 and uh, look at the function value at this point okay. and then again we follow the same procedure. We approximate the given function by a quadratic uh, at this point. So, that could be something like this and then the Newton method finds the minimum of this. So, that turns out to be this point and now that point becomes x k plus 2 and the procedure is repeated. So, every time the Newton method approximates a given function by a quadratic function at a given point. So, remember that when we approximate a given function by a quadratic function using Taylor series, we need both first order and second order derivatives. That is why we need the function to be twice continuously differentiable. Now, in this case, uh, the case which I have shown here is for a simple uh, one dimensional uh, real valued function. Now, if you look at uh, uh, a function in n dimensional space, it could have contours uh, of this type. And uh, so, if we consider a point, suppose we consider a, a point here and let us call this as x k, uh, this is the, uh, the gradient direction. So, the direction along which the function increases. So, if we assume that f uh, is uh, belonging to C 2 and we are trying to minimize f of x, x belongs to R n. So, the Newton method what it does is that approximates the given function by a quadratic function. So, uh, the contours would look like uh, contours of that quadratic could look like this and uh, we know that uh, we can easily find out the minimum of a uh, quadratic function. So, from x k if we find out the minimum of a quadratic function, um, the quadratic approximation we can move to this point. So, from x k one can move to this point. So, this point is going to be x k plus 1 and again at this point one starts uh, approximating the given function by a quadratic function, find the minimum of that quadratic function and the procedure is repeated till uh, the stationary point is reached. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, the steepest descent direction to be minus g k and uh, we have the Newton direction that we are going to see now that is minus h k inverse g k. So, if you see the uh, two directions, uh, the Newton direction tries to deflect the negative gradient direction by the, the inverse of the Hessian matrix. Now, both these uh, directions can be written uh, in the form d k equal to minus a k g k. Uh, so, in the steepest descent method, the matrix A k is nothing but identity matrix 
while in the Newton method the matrix A k is nothing but the Hessian inverse matrix. So, as I mentioned earlier that a lot of uh, directions, descent directions can be generated using this formula. So, different methods use different uh, matrices A k to generate different directions which, which are used for optimization algorithms. So, let us now look at uh, the Newton method. Now, let us consider uh, the unconstrained uh, optimization problem to minimize f of x and let us assume that f is twice continuously differentiable. So, this is uh, the difference between uh, the earlier approach and the, uh, the current approach. In the steepest descent method, we just wanted continuously differentiable functions, but whenever we want to apply Newton method, we need to ensure that the function is twice continuously differentiable and we also assume that f is bounded below that is a reasonable assumption because uh, we want to minimize a problem. So, uh, we can exp uh, assume that uh, f is bounded below. Now, the idea behind Newton method is to use second order information also to find a descent direction and at every iteration of uh, Newton method. Uh, Taylor series approximation of uh, the function at a given point x k is used and uh, since the function f is assumed to be twice continuously differentiable, uh, we can approximate f at x k by a quadratic function. So, let us see how to do that and uh, once we find the quadratic approximation, one can uh, go to the minimum of that quadratic function to uh, find the new point x k plus 1 and this procedure is re repeated till some stopping criteria is satisfied. So, the given function f can be approximated by f q x. So, so, the subscript q here stands for the quadratic approximation and uh, the quadratic approximation using second order uh, Taylor series is f q x is nothing but f of x k. Remember that we are trying to we are approximating the function f by quadratic function at x k. So, f q x is nothing but f of x k plus g k transpose x minus x k plus half x minus x k transpose h k into x minus x k where h k is the Hessian at the current point x k. So, we will continue to use this shorthand notations uh, throughout this course. The g k stands for the gradient at the current point x k and uh, h k stands for the Hessian at the current point x k. So, we will continue to use these notations throughout this course. Now, x k plus 1 is obtained by minimizing the quadratic function f q x. Now, uh, finding the minimum of this unconstrained problem f q uh, f q x is very easy. We have to set take the gradient equated to 0 and then that will give us x k plus 1. So, the gradient of f q x equal to 0 gives us x k plus 1 to be x k minus h k inverse into g k. So, the, here we have assumed that the Hessian matrix h k is invertible only then this step makes sense. So, let us assume that the Hessian is invertible at x k. Now, once you get a new point then again the procedure is to approximate f of x uh, at new point x k plus 1 and then find the minimum of that new quadratic approximation to get x k plus 2 and so on. So, this results in uh, simple Newton algorithm. Now, if we look at the update that we have seen are here x k plus 1 is equal to x k minus h k inverse g k. Uh, if you write it in our usual form uh, x k plus 1 is equal to x k plus alpha k d k, then what we get is alpha k to be 1 and d k to be minus h k inverse g k and that is uh, called the classical Newton method. So, the classical Newton method uses the Newton direction uh, which will be denoted by 
dkn so d and uh, the n stands for the newton method and k stands for the kth iteration and the newton direction at the kth iteration is nothing but minus hessian inverse into the gradient at the current point uh, in addition to this direction we will also say that alpha k is equal to 1 for a for the classical newton method now the question that we need to answer is is the newton direction a descent direction or under what conditions this newton direction will be a descent direction now we know that uh, if gk transpose dk is less than 0 then dk is a descent direction so we apply the same idea here so gk transpose newton direction uh, is nothing but if we use this newton direction so is gk transpose inverse hessian into gk now this quantity uh, is less than 0 if hk is a positive definite matrix so newton direction is a descent direction if hk is a positive definite matrix now now let us consider the problem to minimize f of x to be half x transpose hx minus c transpose x where h is a symmetric positive definite matrix so clearly h is invertible now uh, if we uh, set the gradient of this uh, f to 0 uh, what we get is x star to be h inverse c and that is a strict local minimum now if we apply newton method instead of finding the x star in uh, this way if we decide to apply newton method uh, to so minimize this function f of x so uh, suppose we start from any point x0 in the n dimensional space and the new point is found by approximating the given function by a quadratic function in this case uh, this function indeed is a quadratic function so uh, the approximation is uh, is not necessary we can straight away go to the minimum of this function so if we use the newton method so now if we use first uh, if you find the newton direction which is nothing but the uh, h in uh, hessian inverse into the gradient at the current point so the gradient at the current point gx0 is nothing but hx0 minus c and the hessian at the current point is h so if you use classical newton method what we get is x1 is equal to x0 plus d, d0 n and d0 is n is nothing but minus h inverse into g0 and g0 is nothing but hx0 minus c so uh, h inverse into h is identity matrix therefore this will be x0 minus x0 plus h inverse c so what we get is x1 is equal to h inverse c and this is nothing but x star so you see that if for a quadratic function if we apply classical newton method starting from any point we can reach the solution in exactly one step assuming that the initial point is not the optimal point now compare this with the behavior of the steepest descent method uh, that we saw earlier the steepest descent method uh, depends the behavior of the steepest descent method depends a lot on the uh, condition number of the hessian matrix h so if the condition number of this hessian matrix is 1 then the steepest descent method converges in one step starting from any time uh, any, any point on the other hand if the condition number is much greater than 1 then we saw that uh, the zigzagging uh, takes place and uh, the steepest descent method requires many more iterations uh, for a typical starting point now this is different from what we see here in the newton method for a quadratic convex quadratic function the newton method 
classical Newton method gives us the solution in exactly one step. So, this is the important result that using classical Newton method, the minimum of a strictly convex quadratic function where the Hessian matrix is uh, invertible, uh, that minimum is attained in one iteration from any starting point. Here I am assuming that the starting point is not the optimal point. Now, let us look at the uh, classical Newton algorithm or the an algorithm which uses classical Newton method to minimize a general objective function, not necessarily a quadratic objective function. So, as is the uh, as, as is the usual case, we initialize uh, x 0, then the tolerance parameter for the gradient, set the iteration count to 0. Now, while the norm of the gradient is greater than epsilon, we find the uh, direction which is nothing but negative of the Hessian inverse into the gradient at the current point. Uh, we set alpha k to 1 and then the new point is nothing but x k plus alpha k dk, k equal to k plus 1 and the, the whole procedure is repeated till the norm of the gradient is less than or equal to epsilon. And the, when the algorithm terminates, we get uh, x star to be x k, a stationary point of f of x. Now, let us see some uh, examples where uh, this Newton method is applied to different kinds of functions. So, we already know that uh, if uh, we have circular contours, then uh, even the steepest descent method uh, finds a minimum in one step. So, let us consider the quadratic function where the contours are uh, uh, elliptical, not the circular ones, because uh, for circular contours, uh, both steepest descent Newton method would uh, converge in one step for a quadratic functions. So, this is the contour plot of the function and uh, suppose this is the initial point. And if you apply classical Newton algorithm uh, to minimize f of x, then you will see that in one step it has found out the solution. So, in one step, if we start from this point, in one step we reach the solution x star in, x, in one iteration. Now, uh, if we change the initial point, what happens? So, let us take the same function but change the initial point. So, even in this case, uh, you, you will see that the new classical Newton algorithm converges in exactly one step. Now, if you remember, uh, for this function with the same starting point, if we had used steepest descent method, we saw that there was some zigzagging behavior uh, before the convergence took place. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the application of steepest descent method uh, to this function to minimize this function starting from this point required more than 20 iterations to reach the solution x star and compare that with uh, the Newton method. So, you will see that the Newton method is faster than the steepest descent method, but then uh, if one looks at the algorithm, uh, one realizes that one needs the second order information uh, when one applies classical Newton algorithm and uh, that could be uh, in many cases an expensive, computationally expensive operation. Uh, not only do we need the second order information, but also we need the inversion of a n by n matrix and as we know the computational complexity of inverting a matrix is order n cube. Uh, or inverting a n by n matrix is order n cube. Now, typically this step is uh, not carried out by finding the Hessian inverse, but typically uh, it is obtained, the dk is obtained by solving the system of equations h k dk equal to minus g k. And uh, as uh, we have seen in one of the earlier classes on mathematical background, 
uh, it may be a good idea to do the Kolesky decomposition of this matrix HK if the matrix is positive definite and then uh, finding the uh, direction DK uh, becomes a numerically stable operation. So, we see that Newton method is faster than the steepest descent method, but it requires second order information unlike the steepest descent method. Now, let us apply Newton method, classical Newton algorithm to the Ros standard Rosenbrock function which is mentioned here. Now, these are the contours of this Rosenbrock function and we know that the minimum lies at this point 1 1. Now, if we start from this point, this is the path which is followed by the classical Newton algorithm before it converges to X star. Uh, in this uh, algorithm, uh, I have used a backtracking line search uh, with the Newton direction. Now, if you see the uh, performance of this, uh, you will see that uh, uh, so, here is a table which uh, describes the performance of uh, classical Newton algorithm with backtracking line search uh, applied to Rosenbrock function. So, the first column denotes the iteration number, the next two columns denote the first and the second coordinate of the uh, iterates given by the Newton algorithm. The th this column gives the function value at a current point x k, this gives the norm of the gradient and this gives the the distance between the current point and the solution point and this norm is all these norms are Euclidean norms. So, we start with the point minus uh, 1.2 and 1, the value of the function it is 24.2 and the norm of the gradient is 232.86 and as the iterations progress, you will see that the in every iteration the value of the uh, function uh, decreases and finally, when the al uh, algorithm terminates, we get a point which is very close to the optimal point which is uh, whose x and y coordinates or whose both the coordinates are 1 and 1. And you will see that the norm of the gradient is uh, 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 6. Uh, the value of epsilon that I have chosen here is 10 to the power minus 3. So, from iteration 19 to 20, uh, so at, at the end of iteration 19, the norm of the gradient was greater than epsilon and at the 20th iteration, it became less than epsilon and then the algorithm terminated. And you would see that uh, the distance between the point x k and x star is uh, very close to 0. So, so, when I use backtracking line search, uh, typically for Newton algorithms, it is a good idea to set alpha hat to be 1. The other parameters related to backtracking line search can be uh, obtained by using some, uh, by running the algorithm many times and uh, trying to find out what are the best way, what are the best possible parameters. Now, compare this with uh, the steepest descent algorithm application of steepest descent algorithm to Rosenbrock function with the same initial point. Uh, you recall that that uh, steepest descent algorithm required more than 2000 iterations to achieve convergence starting from the same point. So, there is a lot of uh, time saving when, when one uses uh, Newton method. Uh, especially in terms of number of iterations, but every iteration of Newton method requires the inversion of a Hessian matrix to be computed and that could be time consuming if uh, the dimension n is uh, very large. Now, uh, we take the same function, but with a different initial point and this point is 0 0.6, 0 0.6 and if you apply uh, classical Newton algorithm with backtracking line search. Uh, we see that from this, the path followed is this before it converges to x star. And if you look at the table, so here the algorithm terminated in 9 iterations. Uh, 
and compare this with the uh, termination uh, achieved by the steepest descent method in more than 2000 iterations. Now, if you start from 0.6, 0.6, the initial norm of the gradient is 75.59 and in 9 iterations, the gradient uh, reduced to 2.7 into 10 to the power minus 6 and the value of the function uh, is very small, the distance between the uh, xk and x star is almost uh, close to 0 and the point that we get is very close to the optimal point which is 1 comma 1. So, uh, th this uh, tables and the figures illustrate uh, the application of Newton method to different kinds of functions. Now, let us revisit the classical Newton algorithm that we saw earlier. So, uh, the first step which is a direction finding step uh, finds a direction dk to be the negative of the Hessian inverse into gk. Uh, the step length is always set to 1 in classical Newton algorithm and the new point is obtained by xk plus 1 is equal to xk plus alpha k dk and uh, k equal to k plus 1 and the process is repeated till norm of gk less than or equal to epsilon and as output we get a stationary point xk. Now, let us see some of the uh, important observations related to uh, the classical Newton algorithm which is shown here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, at every iteration there is an order n cube computational effort needed and that will be expensive if the number of iterations goes up. Now, not only that uh, the order n cube computational effort uh, is needed, but the Newton method also requires order n square computational storage because we need to store the Hessian matrix at every iteration and that requires order n square comp uh, storage. So, uh, both the storage wise as well as the computational effort wise, Newton method is expensive compared to steepest descent method. Steepest descent method does not use uh, any second order information. So, there is no need to store any matrix and there is also no need to invert any matrix in the steepest descent method. While here, we need to store this HK as well as invert it in every iteration and that is going to be very uh, expensive computationally uh, for large dimensional problems. Now, what is the guarantee that the direction dk that we choose here in step 2 is a descent direction? So, in this algorithm, you will see that there is no check that dk is a descent direction. So, if hk is negative definite, then dk will turn out to be an, uh, an ascent direction rather than the descent direction that we are looking for. But the algorithm does not check the positive definiteness of the Hessian matrix at any iteration k. Now, not only that, sometimes the matrix HK also could be close to a singular matrix and uh, therefore, inverting a matrix which is close to a singular matrix will give rise to some numerical difficulties and uh, those are not handled in the classical Newton algorithm. So, there is no guarantee that dk is a descent direction. We can get dk to be a ascent direction also and not only that, the algorithm also could be numerically unstable if hk at some iteration becomes a matrix which is close to a singular matrix. Now, another drawback of uh, classical Newton algorithm is that there is no guarantee that the objective function value decreases at every iteration and this is because th there is no line search which is done here. Note that uh, we are taking alpha k to be always 1 at every iteration. So, uh, when the line search is not done, we cannot ensure that the func objective function value 
decreases at every iteration. In fact, in some cases with alpha k equal to 1, the objective function value could increase and uh, therefore, uh, the sufficient decrease conditions of armijo ghostin or armijo wolf, some they are not satisfied. And uh, another important point that uh, needs to be noted is that the algorithm, uh, the classical Newton algorithm is very sensitive to the initial, initial point x, x, x naught. So, let us see uh, one example. We had seen this example in the one dimensional case, but I just want to repeat that. So, if uh, let us consider a real valued function uh, defined on R and uh, let us look at the derivative of that function. Now, if you want to minimize this function, we want to find out the root of g x. Now, the plot of g x is uh, shown here. Now, if we start from x 0 and use Newton algorithm, we go to the point x 1 and again when we use uh, Newton algorithm, we go to point x 2, then x 3 is very close to this and finally, the algorithm converges to this point which is a root of g x. Now, this was with respect to this initial point. Now, suppose if we take another initial point. So, the initial point is x 0 here and then we move on to x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4. So, every time you would see that uh, we are moving away from the root of g x because uh, x 1, the distance between x 1 and x star is less than the distance between x 2 and x star and distance between x 2 and x star is less than distance between x 3 and x star. And finally, uh, x 4 is here and uh, the we, you, you will see that the algorithm diverges. So, Newton method uh, used in the classical sense uh, may not guarantee convergence uh, always. So, this is a very important point about the Newton method. So, uh, let us look at uh, the definition of a locally convergent optimization algorithm. So, an iterative optimization algorithm is said to be locally convergent if for each solution x star there exists some delta which is greater than 0. Now, this delta is a function of x star. So, different for different solutions there would exist different uh, deltas, but to avoid notational clutter I have uh, written, written it as only delta, but keep in mind that that delta is a function of x star. So, there exists some delta which is greater than 0 such that if the initial point is in a ball of radius uh, delta around x star, then the algorithm produces a sequence uh, x k which converges to x star. So, such algorithms are called locally convergent algorithms. So, that means that if we are given uh, x star and if the initial point is chosen uh, uh, around uh, x star in the delta neighborhood of x star or if one happens to choose initial point in the delta neighborhood of the solution point, then the algorithm and if the algorithm converges to x star, then the algorithm is said to be locally convergent. Now, the claim is that the classical Newton algorithm that we saw today is a locally convergent algorithm. So, that means that for each solution x star there exists some neighborhood such that if we start within that neighborhood, we will uh, and and the, if the algorithm uh, generates a sequence which converges to x star, then we will definitely uh, get a locally convergent algorithm. So, let us uh, let f be uh, from r to r f belong to C 2 
because uh, we are going to use Newton algorithm. So, these are reasonable things. So, we will show this uh, result that the classical Newton algorithm is locally convergent for a one dimensional case, the extension to uh, higher dimensions can can be worked out. So, what we want to show is that if we start from a point which is close to x star and use Newton method, then uh, we, we are guaranteed that it will converge to x star. But if we or in other words, if we start from a point which is not in that delta neighborhood of x star, there is no guarantee that the Newton algorithm will converge. And we saw one example just now that for different initializations, uh, a Newton uh, algorithm either converges or diverges or sometimes it might oscillate also. Okay, so, so let us consider the problem to minimize f of x and up suppose we want to use Newton method. Now, suppose x star is a point uh, in R such that the gradient of the function vanishes at that point and then the uh, second derivative of the function at that point is greater than 0. Remember that uh, f 2 dash x star is nothing but g dash x star. So, we want to uh, now apply the Newton uh, algorithm for this function and uh, we will see how to get the delta neighborhood uh, in the uh, around x star. So, that we can start from that point and then the algorithm will uh, if you use classical Newton algorithm it will definitely converge. So, let us assume initially that x 0 is sufficiently close to x star, but at this moment we do not know uh, what is meant by sufficiently close, but let us assume that x 0 is sub sufficiently close to x star. Now, suppose we apply classical Newton algorithm to minimize f of x. Now, at the kth iteration of the Newton algorithm what we have is x k plus 1 to be x k minus g of x k by g dash x k. Note that we are talking about a, a one dimensional optimization problem. So, uh, this is the equation that we have for the k iteration of the Newton algorithm. Now, we are interested in finding out the relationship between x k plus 1 minus x star and x k minus x star. And, uh, what kind of convergence that the Newton algorithm gives if it converges to x star. So, so we subtract x star from both the sides and also subtract uh, g of x star from the numerator. Now, this does not make a difference because we have already assumed that g of x star is 0, x star is a solution point where the gradient vanishes. Now, this can be rewritten. Uh, in this form and uh, the numerator here uh, is in terms of g of x k and g of x star. So, suppose we want to approximate uh, the function g by a quadratic function uh, at x k. We need uh, to assume that f is a thrice continuously differentiable function or g is a twice continuously differentiation uh, differentiable function and then we use a truncated uh, Taylor series to uh, write g x star as a function approximated at x k. So, g of x star is nothing but g x k plus g dash x k into x star minus x k plus half g 2 dash x bar k into x star minus x k square where x bar k is a point on the open line segment joining x star and x k. Now, we can use this uh, in this previous equation and therefore, what we get is x k plus 1 minus x star is nothing but half of g 2 dash x bar k divided by g dash x k into x k minus x star square. So, we have used this x, uh, approximation of g x star at x k in this equation to get this equation. Now, you will see that we have got some relationship between x k plus 1 minus x star and 
xk minus x star square. Now, uh, if you recall the definition of convergence of algorithm, this would turn out to be order 2 convergence provided we uh, make this quantity which is independent of xk because if you look at this quantity, this quantity is still dependent on xk and x star. So, if we can make it independent of xk then or get, get a bound on this quantity then uh, what we will have is xk plus 1 minus x star equal to some constant into xk minus x star square and that will tell us that uh, this Newton method is if it gives a convergent sequence it converges at a rate 2, uh, it has a convergence of order 2 and the rate will be denoted by this quantity. So, so let us look at this quantity further. Now, uh, taking the absolute values on both sides, uh, we get this equation. Now, suppose we try to bound this numerator by some quantity alpha 1 and uh, denominator by a quantity alpha 2 and note that alpha 1 and alpha 2 both are uh, greater than 0. So, suppose there exist uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 both greater than 0 such that this quantity in the numerator is less than alpha 1 for all x bar k because this quantity depends on x bar k. So, for all x bar k in the on the open line segment joining x star and x k and the quantity in the denominator is greater than alpha 2 where alpha 2 is greater than 0 for x k sufficiently close to x star. Then we can write this as x k plus 1 minus x star is less than or equal to alpha 1 into by 2 alpha 2 into x k minus x star square. So, this quantity alpha 1 alpha by 2 alpha 2. Uh, is a constant which is positive and uh, therefore, what we get is that the Newton algorithm if it converges to x star uh, has a order of convergence 2. So, if x k convert, uh, converges to uh, x star then this has order of convergence 2. Now, uh, if you rewrite this equation, so what we get is uh, mod of x k plus 1 minus x star is less than or equal to. So, for if you split this second term into two terms x k mod of x k minus x star into mod of x k minus x star, then uh, when we use Newton algorithm, what we want is that the distance of x k from x star should be uh, or, or the distance of x k plus 1 from x star should be less than the distance of x k from x star or in other words x, uh, the, the distance towards the optimal point should reduce after every iteration. So, which means that this quantity is required to be less than 1. Only then we can ensure that the distance from the new point x k plus 1 from x star will be less than the distance from the distance of the current point from x star. Now, if this has to be less than 1 for all k, then what we have is uh, mod of x k plus 1 minus x star less than mod x k minus x star for all k. If this uh, alpha 1 by 2 alpha 2 into mod x k minus x star is less than 1. Now, this uh, requires the following question that needs to be answered that how do we choose alpha 1 and alpha 2 so, so such that this holds and if this holds then we know that the distance from the new point from x star distance of the new point from x star is less than the distance of the current point from x star. So, how to choose this alpha 1 and alpha 2 is a question and uh, so let us see how to do that. So, at x star we know that the uh, gradient vanishes and then the second derivative is uh, greater than 0, second derivative of f is greater than 0. Now, since uh, g dash is a continuous function or uh, 
uh, f2 dash is a continuous function there exists some uh, e tab which is greater than 0 such that g dash x is greater than 0 in the uh, interval x star minus eta to x star plus eta. So, if you take any x in this interval x star minus eta to x star plus eta then for that x g dash x is greater than 0 because of the continuity of g dash and therefore, if we choose alpha 1 to be max of uh, uh, mod uh, mod of uh, g 2 dash x and alpha 2 to be mean of g dash x in this neighborhood. Now, in this neighborhood g dash x is greater than 0. So, mean of g dash x will always be greater than 0. So, that means that alpha 2 will always be greater than 0 in the eta neighborhood of x star. So, if you choose alpha 1 and alpha 2 in this way, uh, what we have is uh, half of g 2 dash x bar k by g dash x k will be less than or equal to alpha 1 by alpha 2. And let us call that quantity as beta. Now, the next step is to choose x naught. So, it is preferable to choose x naught to be in this interval x star minus eta to x star plus eta because in this interval we know that g dash x is greater than 0 and alpha 1 is a max of this quantity and alpha 2 is a max of this quantity. So, if x 0 is chosen in this interval, we expect that the all the other iterations uh, and if this holds for at every iterations, all the other iterations also will be in that interval and uh, therefore, the algorithm is expected to converge uh, to x star. So, let us see whether the algorithm does converge to x star. Uh, now, uh, we will do that in the next class. Thank you.